our Erech HaMishi. Erech HaMishi of the Talmud Torah. Uh, the Rambam says, the Rambam says, Kishem. I remember by my Chag Asmicha. I don't remember much. But my Chag Asmicha, I was the, you know, they used to have the Chag Asmicha every four years. So if you had Gatsmicha, you know, in those four years, you went to that Chag Asmicha. So I was last year, right before the Chag Asmicha. So I was the youngest. I was the youngest that just got in out of those four years. Rabbi Dr. Ari Berman, who is now the president of Yeshiva University, so he was, I was overlapped a little bit with a Rosa Lecture, he's three years older than me. He was the fourth year. So he spoke at the Chag Asmicha. So he quoted this Rambam. I don't know why I remember that, but he quoted this Rambam. What did the Rambam say? He says, Kishem Sha'ada Mitsuve the Kavod Aviv Ubi Yeraso. Just like we always take a big deal when the Rambam says Kishem. Just like a person is obligated in the Kavod and Mora of his parents, Akul Chayev Ubi Yeraso. So to his Rebbe. And he compared his whole drug to a parent. And um, a Rebbe takes care of, uh, of a Talmud like a parent takes care of a, uh, of a, uh, of a Talmud. Of a, of a child, it's the parent's job to dive in for their children. How much, how many, how much, how much, what a great percentage of the fila is a parent davening for their children and a, a rebbe has to daven for his students to succeed. Maybe as the rebbe has to daven for his students, the ones that aren't at the top of the class even more. That's what the Ramam says. Just like this covet and mora av, this covet and mora rebbe. Rabbi Yosemi Aviv, and in a certain sense, Rebbe is even greater than a father. Shaviv Hevio Lachay Olamaze, because the father brings him to this world. Rabbi Shalim Do Chachma Hevio Lachay Olamaba, and the Rebbe brings him to the next world. Olamaba. The Rambam says later on, uh, this might only be by a Rabbo Mufak, as it's called. You know, we learn. I'm sure you have. You know, we, have, we all have a lot of Rebbeim. Rebbe in this, Rebbe in that. So Rebbe Muvak means that there's one Rebbe that I got most of my Chachma from. Rov Chachma Somimenu. Right, that's a Rebbe Muvak. So these halachas, in the full sense, might only apply, um, you know, to that type of Rebbe, but in a more flexible sense, it could definitely apply to any Rebbe. And then it quotes the Mishnah, it's from um, Elo Matthias. Ra Avedos 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 Rabo. If you see two different Avedos, you can only save one at a time. You should say your Rebbe, Shal Rabba Kodem, Shal Aviv, right? Because he's Olam Haba. Aviv, Rabba, Nisu, and Mavasa, they're both um, holding a bundle. Menecha, Shal Rabba, Vachacha, Shal Aviv. You leave your Rebbe's and, uh, and take off your Rebbe. How about your Rebbe? And then you how about your father? Again, I think you have to use your head. If your father is 80 years old and, and struggling under a bundle, and your Rebbe is a 35 year old, you know, strong guy in shape, you know, I think you could go, you could say, you could help out your father first. One has to use their head in terms of the greater value system. But this is all things being equal and considered. So then the Rebbe would go first because the Rebbe brings to Olam Abba. Or so you have it by Mitzia, you have it by Lodz, Aviv Rabu Shvi Mishmiya. What if they're captured? First, you uh, help your Rebbe to get free, and then the father. But here's the now. All of a sudden, the Ramam says, But Vim Haya Aviv Talmud Chacham. But what if your father also knows Torah? Question about the Girsa, we'll go with this Girsa. If your father is a Chacham, meaning if your father teaches you Torah also, so then he wins. Then it's not a Rebbe versus a father, because the father is also somewhat of a Rebbe. There's no greater kavod umor than when it comes to a father. <laughs> the more of your rabbi is like marat shemayim. But again, if anybody has the schus of learning Torah with their father, and their father also teaches them Torah, so then that father comes before the rabbi. If one does not have that, one father does not teach them Torah, then the rabbi would come before the father in this uh, regard. But a rabbi is like a father. It's a great story. I mentioned it in a parsha shir. Um, I don't know, 10 years ago. There's a story. It's in, if you want a great, if you want a, um, a summer reading, it's not one of those lay on the couch on the pillow summer reading. It's a summer reading that you would still sit at a table. 
there's two volumes called Chiku Mamtakim. I don't know if I mentioned it before. It's uh, Rav Meir Goldbach recommended it to me many years ago. It's the best biography shitos of Rishlomo Zaman Oyerbach. Two volumes. Chiku Mamtakim, it's shitos and stories, everything about Rishlomo Zaman in encyclopedia order, like Aleph Beis Gimel Dalid, Aleph is Avelus and, uh, and uh, Ochel. Fascinating. So in there, one of the stories that's told is that he once went to a wedding uh, with Rukshach. He and Rukshach went to a wedding together. And it was a Talmud and Panovich. It was a Talmud and Panovich. And it was Rav Shlomo Zalman's nephew. Rav Shlomo Zalman's nephew learned in Panovich. They went to the Rebbe. So they were arguing who's going to be inside a Kedushin. Obviously, Rav Shlomo Zalman said, Rav, Rav, no, the, the Panovich, Rav Shach, you, you have to be inside a Kedushin. Rav Shach says, no, you have to be inside a Kedushin. They're going back and forth and back and forth. So finally, Rav Shach says, Rav Shlomo Zalman, you're the uncle. You have to do it. Rav Shlomo Zalman says, you're the father. You have to do it. Because the Rebbe is like a father. And Rav says, you got me. That was it. And Rav did it. And, uh, but that was the story. That was the story because the Rebbe is like a father. And um, Rav could not argue with that uh, argument. And that's why the, the Rambam, will, will be, uh, the next halakha of the Rambam, the Rambam says, L'fichach, he, he explains these afterwards. Now we just list them. L'fichach, Amru. Somebody argues with their Rebbe, it's like arguing with Hashem. You gotta be very careful. sounds like arguing. Mariva means making an argument for not good motives. Somebody who complains, These are all taken from Tevra Midbar. Somebody thinks about their Rebbe in a negative way. Again, it's the Rebbe's job not to make it difficult for the Talmud to, to, um, you know, to behave. You know, just like the Gemara says, a parent should not make it too difficult for a child to behave. A parent is not allowed to, there's a Gemara is like this, but a parent is not supposed to like test the child. The Gemara tells one story. That the uh, one of the uh, a father went over to a son, one of the Amaram, and he takes his favorite shirt and he rips it up in front of him. I'm just testing his kibbutz. How can he do that? that? He's not supposed to do that. So a father and a mother aren't supposed to make it difficult for the child, and the Rebbe is not supposed to make make it difficult for the Talmud. But you know, it uh, has to work both ways. That um, that hopefully it could they could find the right balance. Okay, so we'll get into more of the the Talmud relations. Um, in the uh, the coming days. <laughs> okay, let's get into our new sugya. Our new sugya. Um, we will have somebody ask me. We will have Baruch Hashem. We've done uh, many sugyas. This is we're starting sugya number thirteen. Um, so we will have time for Chazara. We will have time for Chazara. The last week, probably the last week, we'll have time for Chazara. And um, you know, so uh, keep that in mind. Um, I'll try to send out some uh, review sheets and questions, but meanwhile, we're still going further. Meanwhile, we're still going further. I was at a Rebbe's meeting yesterday. They were trying to figure out exactly what the last day of this man was going to be. The Israelis, you know, um, give the uh, because there's a Bechino, whoever wants to take one. You give it Rosh Chodesh Av and have a, have a week of uh, of Shiurim. Or just, um, I don't know if we're going to still have Shir, but uh, the Israeli Shirim, they'll still be there. Or, uh, or they have the, have the test, like right before Tisha B'Av. Bach said, if you have it the week, week less of Yesh Nochlin, how could you have a week yet less of Yesh Nochlin? He was very strong that, you know, every day of Yesh Nochlin is, uh, is valuable. So that's, but that was his, uh, I don't know what they're going to decide, but that was his feat uh, to, to value again. As you see, Baal Basra is jam-packed. Every six lines, we have another major topic. So um, that's what we have also um, today. Okay, here we go. Kuf, Chav, Chesem, and Aleph. A new world. We're going to touch on something that we discussed months ago, but that was a long time ago. So I hope you saw the Gemara. Again, just go straight in the, uh, with your Chavrusas. The Gemara here talks about Rabbi Abba says to Rabbi Yossi Brachama. Rabbi Abba talks to Rabbi Yossi Brachama about six different topics that have nothing to do with each other. So we're going to do... One in the middle. One in the middle. Shalach le Rebbe Abba le Rebbe Yosef Rachama. 
halacha. This gets into laws of share uh, kashras for edus. We did this, uh, if you remember, we did this in Chazka Zabatim. We discussed no gabedavar there. No gabedavar. So that was what we touched on this before. We're going to revisit some of these uh, issues. But uh, I was once at a wedding, and uh, I was asked yes, that at least I, and I think probably most people, there are so many details about who's kosher, who's not kosher. If you're a second cousin, from the mother's side, it's kosher. From the father's side, it's not kosher. And if you're an uncle's married, like there's so many details from Masechah and Hedron quoted. Generally, I mean, I don't know them by heart. Generally, we just say, you know what? Nobody even closely related because you don't want to, you don't want to get into problems. That's generally the minute. That's generally the minute. The problem is sometimes if you go to a wedding where there aren't so many people there that are observant and you have family members that might be some of the only ones, then it gets a little tricky. Who, uh, who could be an aide and who cannot be an aide? But uh, again, this is an important topic to know. So the Gemara here talks about halacha shlishi b'sheni kasher. A shlishi b'sheni. Who is a shlishi b'sheni? We would call that a first cousin once removed. A shlishi b'sheni. When it comes to edus, let's start with one generation. Let's say Reuven and Shimon. Reuven and Shimon are brothers. Two brothers are called the Rishon Berishon with each other. The two first generations. They're puzzled to each other. Two brothers cannot testify against each other. They're Krovin. They're Rishon Berishon. What about Reuven's son? Reuven had a son named Hanoch. So what about Hanoch is a nephew of Shimon? They're also puzzled to each other. That's called the Rishon Bishani. Rishon Bishani, right? One generation removed. That's an uncle and a nephew. What about a Shani Bishani? First cousins. That's a Shani Bishani. That's not what the Gemara talks about here. The Gemara here says, first cousins once removed. Ruvain's grandson and Shimon's son. That's a Shlishi Bishani. Says the Gemara, <laughs> kosher. A shlishi b'sheni, first cousin once removed, are allowed to testify for or against each other. They're not related. Shlishi b'sheni is not related. Fine. Rav Amar, right, often like when we talk colloquially, right, people say like, we're first cousin once removed, but we're so close. We're like first cousins to get the removed. But we're not talking about like emotional feelings here. We're talking about halacha. Halacha says that these people can testify against each other. They're not called Krovim. Ashlishi Bishani. That is Rav Abba. Rav Amar Afarisha. Not only first cousins once removed, but even not only Ruvain's grandson, Shimon's son, but Ruvain's grandson, Shimon. Great uncle. Great uncle. Great nephew. A Shlishi Parishon. Remember, Reuven and Shimon are generation one, so Reuven's grandson is Shimon's great nephew. Reuven's grandson. Right? I have a couple of great nephews. Right? So, me to my great nephews, right? We are Kasher Laedus. That's what <laughs> Rebbe Abba says, and that's what Rafa says. Af Parishon. And here comes now the controversial part. Rava says Afarishon, and that is generally uh, what we, well, we'll see in a second. See in a second. Let's just do the first, next line first. Marbar Avashi Amar, Achshir, Ba'apa Ta'apa. Marbar Avashi says not only Ruvain's grandson with Shimon, Ruvain's grandson with Ruvain. That's also a Shlishi Barishon. Ruvain and Shimon are on the same generation level. So just like Rava says, Ruvain's grandson is kosher to Shimon, Ruvain's grandson is kosher to Ruvain. Ruvain and Shimon are the same. It says Mar Barbashi, unbelievable. A grandfather and a grandson are not related to each other. For Edus. Shlishi Barisham. That's Mar Barbashi. Bless Hilchasak Mar Barbashi. 
says the Gemara, we don't pask in that way. No, you can't testify against your grandfather or for your grandfather. Right? Grandfather is Pasol. Right? Less Hilchos of Kamar Barabashi. So this is the Machlokas. Everybody seems to agree that a great uncle, Shlishim Birishon, is okay. But once you have it straight in a line, a grandfather and a grandson, so that is um, not clear. And that's what the Shulchan Aruch discusses in Choshim Mishpat. I didn't give this to you, but Lamed Gimel. Lamed Gimel. Let's just start with the Halacha and then we'll go backwards. Because A does a Sibin Lamed Gimel. Says the Shulchan Aruch. Elu Heinatzulim. Achim Zem Zeh. Who are puzzle? Brothers. That's that. Rishon Barishon. Ain Min Ha'im Bein Min Ha'av. Maternal or paternal. Arahim Rishon Barishon. Ubineim Zem Zeh. Shani Bashani. First cousins. Are puzzle. Ubineim Bein Ha'im Zem Zeh. Shlishi Bishlishi. Are puzzle. Second cousins. But they're the same level. First cousins, no good. Second cousins, no good. Ula Olam. Shlishi Barishon Kasher. But Shlishi Barishon is Kasher. A great nephew and a great uncle. The Ainsar Chlomar Shlishi Bisheni. And first cousin once removed is even more Kasher. Right? Even though it's a Shani Bishlishi, it's one generation closer, but you have to go through. Like we talk about Mishmush, you have to go through. Not only is a great nephew to a great uncle okay, surely keep going down one generation. That's A father with a grandson is fossil. Right? We don't pass like my barbashi. I don't want to read the next line because I might give it away. So I'm not going to read the next line. Go look at it afterwards. Lama Gimel base, where he says what the uh, um, what the svara is. Let's hold off on that for a second. Let's hold off on that for a second before we see the toasts here. So this is Mar Baravashi, and we don't pass him like Mar Baravashi. We say a grandfather and a grandson are apostle. Here, as hopefully you saw, there's a major machlokas we shown him between the Rashbam and toasts, the Rashbam and everybody. The Rashbam is the one that says it. What does the Rashbam say? The Rashbam says, we don't pass like my Baravashi, meaning we say a grandfather and a grandson are hostile to each other. Says the Rashbam, B'nai Banim, B'nai B'nai Banim, Ad Elef Doros. Lo Yaidu Avotzeha. It's around how many generations? A straight line says the Rashbam or puzzle. A great, 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 great grandfather and you are puzzle to each other. That's around how many generations? Why? The Ben Yerech Avivu. Because the son is literally the thigh of the father. That means, as we said earlier in the first Sugi, remember, Brok Haradavua. The son is the offshoot of the father. And therefore, straight up is no good. That's not a, uh, that can never be good if it's straight up. That is the sheet of Rashbam. Brakara Davua, and even five generations, Brakara Davua. That is not Mafurish in the Gemara. What does the Gemara say? Gemara just says we don't pass them like Mar Baravashi. Mar Baravashi says grandfather and grandson. That's it. The Rashbam says, you know what this means? Any straight line is no any straight line is no good. And who argues? Who doesn't argue? That's the question. Right? This is pretty clear. Those votes, the Rambam, and others. Those votes, you with me, lady? You with me? Early in the morning. You're with me. Okay. Says the um says Tosis. Says Tosis. Less Ilchasa Kamar Barabashi. Here's for Kuntris. He quotes the Rashbam as Kuntris. Gafilu atov kolador as pasul. The ein nireleri. Wrong. Wrong. Even this palig dara kolkach. No, it's not true. Even if it's in a 
straight line, it separated generations. If this is Alidara, literally the generation separated, therefore they're kosher, meaning according to Tosfos, and according to other Rishonim, we'll see the Rambam now, it's only a grandfather and a grandson. A great grandfather, that would be okay. Great grandfather and great grandson are not considered Krovim. That's what Rov Rishonim say, the Rambam, in Ilchas Eidus. Yud Gimel Hey, the Rabbi Menel Chazedot and Yud Gimel Hey says, "Ha'avim Beno, to Rishon Berishon, Lefiha Ha'avim Ben Beno Pasol, a father and son." You know, we said before, Reuven and Shimon are Rishon Berishon. Says the Rambam, a father and son are also called Rishon Berishon. Ha'avim Ben Beno in Beno Pasol. So, if a father to a son is like Rishon Berishon, so a father to a grandson is Rishon Bishani. That's why it's a problem. The father to a great grandson is Rishon Mishlishi. That's why it's Kasher. What did Rava say? What did Rava say? Rishon Mishlishi is Kasher. That was a great uncle and a great nephew. And Marbar Avashi says, oh, even a grandfather and a grandson. We say, no. Why? The Ram gives the Svara. Av and Beno is Rishon Barishon, but only one generation. Only once do you say that. Against the Rashbam. The Rashbam says, You keep saying that. You keep saying that. It says the Rambam once, the Ben Ben Beno, Shahu Revi'i Mimenu, Kasher, Ibne Shahu, Shlishi Barishon. Remember, let me just emphasize one letter, which I didn't emphasize. When the Rambam says, Avin Beno, Ki Rishon Barishon. That's an important kit. It's not really Rishon Barishon. Rishon Barishon really means same generation. Ki Rishon Barishon, that means it is like, it has the status of Rishon Barishon, right? And it's against, as the Mishnah here, it says, Udalo Kirashbam, the low Kirashbam, right? Because the Rashbam says it keeps going to all the generations at Sof Kaladoras. And the Ritva here quotes this Machlokas as well. So the first question we can ask is, what's the Machlokas? What's the Nukudas of Machlokas here? Why would the Rashbam say that? All generations? Even five generations up, down? Right, what, what, what's, this, what's this Machlokas about? Right. So even before we see, somebody try to think methodologically. When you have this kind of machlokas, what could it be about? What could the machlokas be about? It could be about either, maybe it's a, a general, yeah, Avram. Either about the Psul Karov and maybe it's it um, has different rules by direct descendants or that there's a special din about direct descendants that get, makes them an exception from um, the dinim of Edus. Oh, the excellent meaning is a machlok is about direct descendants. But whenever, uh, whenever you, we, we have a machlok is like this, methodologically, before you see even any evidence, you try to think that what the machlokas could be about, so that when you see the evidence, you know what they're saying, and you know what they didn't say. This machlokas could be about, I'll say it in the order that you said it, Avram, uh, it could be about the issue of karof, meaning why is a karof puzzle? Why is a karof puzzle? And that would, and whatever the reason, the answer for that question is, so then that could have ramification between whether you know, uh, it goes straight up and down for generations or just once. Right? And that could be because, again, there are two issues that are, uh, you know, crossing each other, bisecting here. Number one is Karov. Number two, maybe it's not focus in general about father, son, grandson relations. Everybody might agree what the reason for Psul Karov is. And the machlokas is, well, how do you view 
fathers and sons and grandsons and great grandsons. Two possibilities. We'll have to see what people say. We'll have to see how we can, you know, um, view it and and help out. So we're going to analyze the first one. The first, uh, first one that we said. The one about the second one that we said. I didn't find much evidence on. I think it's a possibility, meaning it's a machlokas in general about how you view generations. But there's more evidence that it's a machlokas about how do you view the psalm as we will see. So, Tukumars. Tukumars seem to be so to each other. And that's where this sugya gets a little tricky. Tukumars. So we have the Gemara in Sanhedrin and the Gemara in Oh, Abastra, later on. Sanhedrin. Let's go to Sanhedrin. Those who have a Sanhedrin can open it up. Chav Ches Amid Beis. Chav Ches Amid Beis in Sanhedrin. Here we go. Says the Gemara. Second to last skinny line. You have it? Who's got it? You see, you have a Gemara there. In the holy city. The Mir. And um, Ellie, you got some Gemaras out there in the uh, sunroom? Um, or you know it, you know it. Your chaz were getting in your head. Okay, uh, good. Dove, you got some Gemaras there, I'm sure. And uh, we're all moving. Ama Rabba Barbarchana, Meid Adam Ishto Arusa. Says Rabba Barbarchana, Abamina, after stage one of marriage. A man can get testimony for his wife who is an Arusa. Remember, there's no such thing as engagement in halacha. It's Arisen and Isuin. Two stages of marriage. So, Meir Adam Lish Arusa. Says Rav Rachana, a person can get testimony for his wife. Amaravina. Lo Amaranella Fukimina. Maybe this is only if it's against her. If it's to her detriment. Aboli Yule Lalo Mehemen. If it's something good for her, no, he can't. He's half married to her. So we'll allow him to give testimony if it's bad for her, but not if it's good for her. That's an interesting Havamina. Do we ever have such a status? Is he kosher laedus? Is he not kosher laedus? Why would you only believe in bad? It's like eight other Mason Matzal Russia kind of thing. Like this is an amazing Havamina. Right, something to think about. The Gemara says, below he, Gemara rejects it. No, you can't give testimony for her. Period. Even negative. Why not? Why can't a man testify that is Arusa? My daitech, what's your svara? Why did you want to say that she can? He can, he can, right? She's not giving aid. She's supposed to Why do you say? Why did you think that he's a, he's kosher? Because after all, there are a lot of halachos that don't kick in until after nisuin. There's a lot of halachos that don't go by erisin. Most halachos go by nisuin when they're fully married. If a man has erisin, right? They used to do that in the olden days, twelve months apart, and then she dies. Does not observe aninus. If he is a Kohen, he's not allowed to be matami for her. And also she. Mesa, Eno Yersha. Right, we discussed that at length. A Baal is not Yoresh, Ishto, unless it's Nisuin. Mesu Gobetsu Basa. So asks the Gemara. You see, so many Allahs don't kick in until they have to Nisuin. It says the Gemara. Is that why you think a husband should be kosher? Or ishto arusa? Is that what you're thinking? Says the Gemara, it's still possible. Why? Here's the key line. Awesome. Over there, by all those halachos of Yerusha, of Onain, of Tuma, awesome. She'ero tala rachmana. It's talion she'er. We had that. Remember that? 
She'er, She'er Basar, flesh. It goes by She'er status. She'erohim. He is not her She'er. So that's why all these halachas don't continue. There's no Avelos, there's no Anis. Acha, Mishum Ekruve Daitahu. Here, it's because of Ekruve Daita. How would you translate that? Here, it's because of Ekruve Daita. And he has Kirbadas to her. Yeah, Natano, you going to say something? It could be like bias. Okay. Okay, good word. Bias. His mind is close to her. Ikruve daita. Give me two words. He said bias. Give me two Hebrew words. What is this Gemara? How does this Gemara seem to define the soul of Karov? Yeah, Avram. Chasha Sheker. Excellent. Chasha Sheker. We're worried that he's going to lie. That's the simple reading of the Gemara. Ikruve daita. What is the Gemara saying? Technically, they're not related. They're not fully related. They're not fully related. All the other halachas of marriage don't kick in yet. But he loves her. But they're half married. Half married is good enough for us to say, us Because of Ikruve daita. That's one Gemara. There's another Gemara. I'm going to write something down that I just thought of. One second. Okay. So the Pashas of Akruve Daita. You know, they're connected to each other, and therefore, um, he might lie. That's the Pashas. There is another Gemara in Baba Basra. Later on, Kuf Nun Tes. One, five, nine. Kuf Nun Tes of an Aleph. We don't have to do the entire Gemara, because the Gemara just brings our line as a model, as a rhetorical question. The there's talking about something else, at Barak Misha Mace's, and the Gemara brings a rhetorical question. To prove something. So if you look six lines up from the bottom, the Gemara says, if you don't say this without getting into the details, Moshe Aaron if Moshe and Aaron were testifying about their fathers in law, would we not trust them? Moshe Rabbeinu and Aaron are going, they're gonna lie. They're going to make up a story. That's why we don't trust Moshe and Aaron testifying together. Says the Gemara, of course not. Alexeras Melechu. Shalom Yehidu Lohem. There's a Kasev. There's a Kasev. Says the Gemara in Baal Basra as a rhetorical question. Why can Moshe and Aaron testify? Obviously, we don't think they're going to lie. But there's a Kasev. There's a Kasev that they can't. Testify together about each other, etc. That line is very different than the Gemara and Sanhedrin that we just saw. You look at that line; it's not because we think they're going to lie. They're not going to lie. If we, if Paro was all about lying, then maybe Moshe and Aaron could testify. You get two different, two very different senses. From these two Gemaras. If if we would if we would say that these are two mutually exclusive ideas, two very different ideas behind Karov, let me give you two nafkaminas. This is the Rabbi Hanan that I gave you. Only Rabbi Hanan could think of these. Rabbi Hanan, you have to realize every yeshiva in the world, Rabbi Hanan, there's only one Rabbi Hanan. You know, he was Zoha. You say Rabbi Hanan, everybody knows. It wasn't so long ago. 
He was killed in the Shoah, Rahman al -Islam. There are pictures of him in New York. He came to New York to collect money for his yeshiva in Baranovich in the late, in the 1940s, early. I, yeah, I forgot the exact picture. I have a, I have a little book upstairs that uh, it's called, it's a little soft covered art scroll book that um, it's called, it's an impulse item. You know what an impulse item is? I majored in economics in college. I know what an impulse item is. But an impulse item is something that they put by the cash register that when you're checking out, oh, I'll just take it. Like you have an impulse and the impulse item. So near camp, maybe Aaron, you could, you could go. In Woodridge, New York, there's a farm store. So right at the door of this farm store, you have this little art scroll, uh, soft covered uh, thing about famous photographs. Famous photographs. So it's all about the Gedolim over the past hundred years, photographs. So obviously, it's the earliest pictures are from the 1880s, because that's when photography just started coming. I think the oldest one there, we once checked it out, is the Chafetz Chaim's Rebbe, Reb Nechamka. Reb Nechamka, they have a picture of Reb Nechamka from like 1883, because it was just photography was just coming out. Anyway, so they have stories there. Why am I telling you this? Good question. Um, why did this come up? What was I just talking about? Reb Hanan. Reb Hanan, thank you. So, so Hanan, they have a picture of Reb Hanan in there. They have a picture of Reb Hanan on a boat in New York, going back to Europe. He was in New York. He knew it was dangerous. He said, I can't leave my Talmidim. My Talmidim are there. I know it's dangerous. He went back and he was killed. He went back and Rahman al He was killed in the Shoah. He knew what he was going to, but he felt that he couldn't leave his Talmidim. But this is Rabbi Hanan. He was He didn't live so long ago. He didn't live so long ago. The stories of Schwab tell stories about Rabbi Hanan. When Rabbi Hanan came to New York, stayed in his house. But anyway, Rabbi Hanan has these two nafkamiyas. Most of this farm of Rabbi Hanan were put together by Talmidim. The Kovach I don't think Rabbi Hanan put together the Kovach I think it was uh, put together by, uh, by Talmidim. If you ever, you know, we're getting into the three weeks. Um, this three weeks reading is even Tisha B'Av reading. If you want something to read on Tisha B'Av, it's just two pages. The Hakdama of the Kovach Two pages. We never did it on those Friday Hakdamas. It is heart-wrenching. It's heart-wrenching. It describes from a Talmud, I don't know how the Talmud survived, but it describes as they walk towards the gas chambers, uh, the last time they learned, and Rabbi Hanan was telling them, you know, we're like Karbanos, and Machshava is Poselis in Karbanos, you have to have a pure Machshava, so the carbon is Ola, Lerech Nichoach. It is, it's very powerful. But it's um, at the, this time of year, as you get to the three weeks of Tisha B'Av, you know, it's, uh, if you remember, you know, Tisha B'Av, like, what could I do? I can't learn. to learn that. The Dhamma of the, of the uh, Rebbe Hanan, I'm sure it'll be online if you're not next to a Rebbe Hanan over year. But anyway, let's get back to our topic. Says Rebbe Hanan, I'll give you two nafkaminas. Whether Karov is a psul shah shaker or a formal psul there is a what if the Karov doesn't realize that he's a Karov? Doesn't realize. Doesn't realize that it's a brother. Is he allowed to testify? Ezdin knows that they're brothers. But they don't know that they're brothers. So they allowed to testify. So it says Rabbi Hanan. Says Rabbi Hanan. If you say it's pure shasheker, on the Chorah, you would say that if he doesn't know that it's a brother, he'll be kosher. It's only shasheker because I know he's my brother. But if I didn't know he's my brother, there's no reason for me to lie. Mashaikin, if it's Xer Sakasov, this is my brother, it doesn't matter. Xer Sakasov. Moshe and our own. We don't think they're gonna lie. If they're brothers, they can't testify. With each other, about each other. So that theoretically, <laughs> theoretically, that would be one nafkamina. Nobody really paskins that way. But it would be an interesting nafkamina in Lundus. 
And what about the other way? What about the other direction? Biological brothers. Abram. Two brothers that convert. They love each other. Guess what? Gershon is Gayer, Katan Shinola dummy. And they're allowed to testify. Halachically, on a Torah level, a brother and a sister who convert can marry each other on a Torah level. Meet the Rabbanan, we say it's Usr. Because when they were Goyim, they couldn't marry each other. The concept of family in Goyim, so just we can't have anything that was Usr for a Goy and Mutter to a Jew. The Lo Yomru, people, they shouldn't say, Banam Mikdusha Hamur Lakdusha Kala. That's a Sugya in uh, Yevamos. It can never be something that was Usr for them then and Mutter when they become Jewish. But technically, two brothers that are Gerim are not related to each other. So here you have the other Nachimina. If you say that it's Mishum, Karo, Zeret HaKasuv, then they should be kosher. They're not related. Halachically. But if you say Kirub Das, then it's Kirub Das here. It's Kirub Das here. They're brothers. So conceptually, conceptually, those could be nafkaminas. And maybe, maybe this could also have something to do with the machlokas, Rashbam and Tosfus. Let's try to plug this in. And the machlokas we're trying to analyze. Rashbam says, all generations up, down, all generations are hustle. A great great grandfather cannot testify for a great great grandson. And Tosfus and the Rambam and others say, no, grandfather, grandson, that's it. Great grandfather, kosher. What's that machlok is about? What's that machlok is about? Nafkali. The Rashbam would have to say it's, it, it would be within Karo because he extends it all the way. If it was within Karo of Tosus, we'd also have to extend it all the way because they're still technically related. So Tosus must hold that it's just about a, uh, a key, about a cure of a das, and you don't really feel connected necessarily to your great great grandfather. Beautiful. So says Rabbi Khanan in a little bit. He says, Look at Rashi in Bracious. The Rashi in Bracious. Erech Chof Aleph, Pasik Chof Gimel. Chof Aleph, Chof Gimel. Chof Aleph, Chof Gimel, you ready? This is right before the Akeda. Right before the Akeda, Avram makes a treaty with Avimelech. Avram makes a treaty with Avimelech. And they swear to each other. Avimelech says to Abraham, Swear to me in the name of God. In Tishkarli, if you swear to me that you're not going to lie, Tishkarli, Ulanini, Ulanechti. Don't, don't, I don't want you to violate this treaty with me or my son or my grandson. Nin there means son. Ulanini, Ulanechti. Right, that's what the uh, uncle says. Uncle says, "Di ubibri ubibarbri." That's what it means. Li ulanini ulanechti. Right? Don't why a chesed asher asisim cha tasei madi. Like the chesed I did for you, you do for me. Be ma'ar asher gartava. So Avi Melech says, Avi Melech says, Avram, you better keep this treaty. With me and my son and my grandson. Says Rashi. Says Rashi. Quoting the Medrash. Adkan Rachme Ha'av Al Haben. That's as far as the Rachamim of a father goes to a grandson. Quoting from the gracious Rabbah. 
You know what? I didn't do my homework. I didn't look up the medrash. Let me just look up the medrash, see if the medrash adds anything. Noon dollar days. Let me just see if the medrash adds anything. Noon dollar days. Noon dollar days. Here we go. There's a whole thing. We have a band. Nothing. Okay, no. Let's quote it. Fine. What do you see from there? Adkan Rachme Avala Ben says Rabbi Khan, what you see from there is a special feeling up until a grandfather and a grandson. Adkan Rachme Avala Ben says Rabbi Khanan, like Nafeli just said, that's exactly our suggestion according to Tosvos. Tosvos says the Psaltaro is about Shasheker, Ikruve Daita, and Ikruve Daita only applies for two generations. But the Rashbam, maybe holds, it goes based on Eretz It goes based on relatedness. And every, if it's all in one line, the Rashbam says, it's all Brok Haradavua. All Brok Haradavua. All, you know, connect. It's all considered Rishon Barishon. It's all Rishon Barishon, not just the skips one. All Rishon Barishon. So maybe this Hakira is Gufa, the Machlokas. Between the Rashbam and Tosfos, yeah, Nat- uh, Naftali. Maybe I misheard, but didn't we say that Nicholas says the word Nimi, which would be a great grandchild? So that would. Uh, that's why I said in modern Hebrew, in modern Hebrew, Nin means great grandson. In modern Hebrew, but it's clear in the Pasuk it doesn't mean that because Nin is even before before Nechet. Ni ule Nini ule Nechti. As I read the uncle, it's the uncle that says there Nin means Bri. Nin means my son. Um good. Rabbi. Yeah. Isn't there a Mishnah that says that if you're an Ohev or a Sone that you can't testify about someone? Um yeah, there are def- definitions of what an Ohev and a Sone right. is. Right. So I'm saying so uh, two Gerim that were brothers and then converted, they still would be concer- would still be called an Okay, Ohev. so so that's a, that's a good point. Uh we're going to do the Gerim in a second. But the answer before we do the next line, which is going to take back what I just said, but to answer you, you're right. It might be puzzle mishum oe, but not mishum achin. And the difference? It could be. I mean, it could be as uh, maybe certain areas we would allow. Let's say uh, an oe going, uh, saying something against his brother. We would allow an oe to go give negative testimony. But the oe is only because we think he's going to do something for him. So it could be a nafkamina. But either way, so this is all a setup. So we have this Hakira. We have two different versions. We have the Gemara in Sanhedrin and the Gemara in Baal Basra. They give us two different impressions. We have two nafkaminas. Hey, the Karov doesn't know he's a Karo for brothers who are Gerim. Um, and then maybe this is the Machlok of Rashi and Tosis. The problem is, though, the problem is, though, that it doesn't seem to be so simple to be too <laughs> totally... Um, Two totally exclusive approaches because in both of those nafkaminas, one side is clear. Nobody holds the other way. First of all, if the car doesn't know he's a car, we have no evidence that we would allow him to testify. That would be a huge chiddish. So Lachanan says that. Lachanan says, Lo shamanu chiddish that. Note that it's a Kiddush Gadol. So it will be very hard to say that there's a pure Shasheker approach. And if there's no Shasheker, we would allow Krovin to testify. Right? So that's number one. Meaning, it seems that if somebody is a Karov, they can't testify. Period. Even if they don't know. And the other way, Aaron. It's a halacha mafurish in Shulchan Aruch. It's a halacha mafurish in Shulchan Aruch. Aaron brothers are allowed to testify. Aaron brothers are allowed to testify. Says the Shulchan Aruch. Simon Lamed Dalid, same Simon. I'm sorry, Lamed Gimel Yud Aleph. Lamed Gimel Yud Aleph. A gerim me'akum, ein lohem kurva. 
Afilu shnei achim taomim. Even twins. Even twins. Shen is gairu. Meidim zelazeh. The ger shen is gairu kan shen olad dami. The ger that converts is kipatan shen olad dami. The only question, you look in the Nose Kalim on the Shulchan Aruch here, they wonder what happens if you have a woman who's pregnant with twins and then she converts. What's called Orasan Chalo Bikdusha, Vuleidasan Bikdusha. That's a machlokas. They were born Jewish as brothers. But they, Horasan was Shalo Bikdusha. So would we say there, right? That's the Sma. The Sma has that suffix. Nistape. Isha Horasan Chalo Bikdusha, Vinizgairu Imok, Chaisim Uberes. Chalo the Bikdusha. Igamkin Mikru Gairim Stam. Okay, that's the only Shiloh. But it's clear, Gerim are Mutter. So again, Yosi's question, what about Oev? So maybe Bezdem will have to do research. Maybe Bezdem will have to do research if they really love each other so much that they would, uh, they would have to lie. So that wouldn't be Pasal Mishum brothers. It would just be Pasal Mishum um, Oh, hey. Yeah, Levi. Uh, is it possible that they, there's like an intrinsic love for each other, even if they don't know that they're brothers? Like some sort of inherent? Um, I don't know, Sorry. love. There's an intrinsic connection. It could be an intrinsic, they think alike. Sometimes you have people who would think alike. Is there a love between two people who are on the other side of the world that they never knew that they were brothers? And they find a connection, or not, not necessarily connection. Love, or... There's a connection. Uh, Halachically, there's a connection. That's what I would say. So, Pashas is, Pashas is like, these are not Kaminas. But um, it's, it's still um, not so Pasha that it would be too mutually exclusive cases. Also, the final point, we'd rather not have a machlokas between two Gemaras. The two Gemaras give two different impressions. So we'd rather, we'd rather read them together somehow. We'd rather read them together somehow. We have to figure out how. I'll just leave you with a question. Tomorrow, I'm not sure if I'm going to give cheer tomorrow. Thursday, there's no cheer because it's, uh, it's after the capsules. I'm going to be away on Thursday. Uh, tomorrow, I'm not sure if I'm going to give cheer or Ronnie is going to give cheer. If somebody's going to give cheer tomorrow, uh, he'll be in touch. Um, and then Thursday, there won't be cheer. Um, but um, I hope at the end tomorrow night, those sichas chaim. It will be a sichas chaim even if I don't give, uh, even if I don't give cheer. Um, okay, review the question, though. So gerim, according to what we just said, are allowed to testify even though they're not related, because they're not, they're not related. Therefore, they can testify even though there's kiruv das. So why did the Gemara say in Sanhedrin that? Ishto Arusa is also technically not related, right? She'er, versus the Ferish, they're not She'er, but we won't allow the testimony because of Kirib Das. What's the difference between Arusa and Agar? Gemara says the Ferish, it's not She'er Basar, but it's Tali and Kirib Das. And therefore, we will not, not allow the husband to testify about Ishto Arusa. But by Ger, you have the same Svara, as Yotze just asked. Isn't there Kirav Das? So what's the difference between the two? So we're going to have to talk about this, and then we're going to get into the Maharik. The Maharik, who brings our Sugya, Bab Asra, into the world of, is there any idea of Kavod for a grandfather? It's great to give your kavod, grandfather Kavod. Question is in terms of the halachas of kibud av, is there kibud saba halachically? Right, that's what the Ma'arik learned something from our Gemara. The Rama argues, and we'll have to figure out exactly what to do with all the Gemaras that are involved.